Anyone who asks about the main psychopaths of Roman times will immediately name this prominent person, Nero, who killed his mother, cousin, half-brothers, forced his teacher to slit his wrists, and who watched Rome burn with a smile. Apart from him, Tiberius, who killed anyone simply out of bad mood. And finally, Caligula. A novel was dedicated to the latter and even several of its film adaptations were filmed. The secret side of the reign of all these personalities became known thanks to the book Lives of the Twelve Caesars, written by the chronicler Gaius Suetonius in the second century, on the foundation of the records of many of his predecessors. The story which Gaius Suetonius wrote begins with Caesar. His name began to be added to themselves by the dictator's eleven heirs, but writers and directors simply liked Caligula. Well, why is that? To put it mildly, it's because he's done so many things that will give you goosebumps. What are those exact things? Welcome back to Flip Side of History, the channel dedicated to the other side of our human history. So, today we will discuss the deeds of the Emperor Caligula and talk about him in depth. Let's continue. The Secret of the Cognomen Nickname when he was born, the hero of the episode had the name Gaius Caesar. He was the third son of Germanicus, the nephew of Tiberius, adopted by his uncle but, lamentably, died early. That is why the post of, let's say, dictator of the empire passed from the already spoiled old man Tiberius immediately to the son of his successor. And small boot, this is how the word Caligula is translated as a diminutive of Caliga, soldier's boot. By the way, the word Caliga has firmly entered the everyday life of populations of numerous European countries. In the language of ancient Russia, the concept of Kaliki was found in the interpretation of sandals for those who make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. For some reason, since childhood, Gaius has been asking for his shoes to look like soldiers' shoes, and his grandmother, with whom he was brought up for the most part, although he occasionally drew his attention to the depraved villas of other relatives, did not refuse him anything. At all the feasts, the boy was remembered by his shoes, an exact copy of the boots of the legionnaires, but smaller. So that's why they honored him with such a nickname. Lucent love for his sister There was no one left from his family except his grandmother and sister. Among the rest, he felt like an outsider and tried to hide his thoughts and emotions, except for his passion for bodily debauchery and power, again according to Suetonius. It is said that only to his sister could he confide the innermost. Having been involved in adultery since adolescence with all his relatives and acquaintances who did not mind for the most part, Caligula truly loved only his own sister. But anyway, this is just a legend. But she also says that Drusilla, the same sister, was also a Vestal Virgin, or Virgo Intacta. And then she was killed. The Pleasures from Executions and Torments It all began with an example. Since even when Tiberius ruled the Roman Empire, his little great-nephew happily watched all the executions and tortures of people to which his grandfather, mad with ferocity, led. Tiberius could have taken the lives of people himself, everyone who contradicted him or whom he suspected of something. Gaius Suetonius describes an incident in which, while still a young man, Tiberius near Capri struck a fisherman in the face with a fish, mullet, only because he brought it to him as a gift. The future emperor learned a lot from the present, and in many ways we can openly say that he surpassed the teacher. The charge hand of the gladiatorial games ordered one man to be beaten with iron chains in front of his eyes for several days, and did not finish him off before he could smell the horrible stench. The author of the verses was set on fire for an ambiguous joke. It happened in the middle of the amphitheater. He could always cut something off of anyone. Until then, when he was a Roman governor, Caligula made part of the performances in the arena the cruel execution of criminals. They were lined up in a long line and their throats were cut. Yet one day there were no convicts, and the madman asked to let some passers-by into the arena, and then let the lions out there. But despite all of it, the role of a spectator of the agony of death often did not suit the tyrant. In ancient treatises, it was said that he personally applied red-hot brands when visiting torture chambers. He cut out the parts of body of the women and the limbs of the men. He went as far as making people blind. And once he tested his hardiness, deciding to cut a still-living person in half with a specially made saw. Extreme form of paranoia After Caligula rose to power and influence, he allowed some of Tiberius' political enemies to return to the city. He even invited one of them for a conversation. Why? To find out what those people did in exile. 
Those whom he asked this question replied that they constantly prayed to the Roman gods that Tiberius would die and Caligula could become an emperor. But the poor politicians could not even imagine that this change would lead to the death of thousands of people. The paranoid man thought that Tiberius' enemies were plotting against not just Tiberius himself, but also him. As you might guess, he ordered them all to be killed. By the way, he made a senator his favorite horse. There were rumors, there is no documentary evidence of them, that Caligula proclaimed his horse in Citatus as senator. It is known for certain that he treated the pet in public much better than the people around him. But most of all, he hated the Senate, pretty much like all Caesars. Gender dysphoria, maybe. Before he was proclaimed the next princeps of the Pax Romana, Tiberius' sensuous favorite beloved boy liked to dress up in women's clothes and give himself up in taverns to people with whom the future emperor would do well to establish contacts in advance, well, to strengthen the rear. And he indeed strengthened them by launching all the necessary people in one particular place, one person at a time, and yet the boy himself received joy from this. Excessive regard for sexual activity. This part of his persona, according to contemporaries, is the main feature of this princeps. Let's note that the term itself translates as first in the list, and indeed. At various feasts, he now liked to be the first, to dominate. Although some pointed out that sometimes he missed the role of a passive person very much. As an emperor, Caligula could want any person at any time and also in any place. Age, gender, race and social stratum did not play a role at all. He made good use of servants, and above that, those who were not even 14 years old. It was impossible to refuse, and the sexual activity itself was, sadly for those whom he chose, vigorous and tough. Let's take a look at the following chapter. The pinnacle of madness is war with the waters and with Roman gods themselves. Somehow, our hero went so far as to declare war to Neptune, or Neptunus, the god of the sea sent legions to the English Channel and commanded an attack on the sea itself. But there is something to be aware of. Researchers agreed that Caligula was simply waging an unsuccessful war against the British. His soldiers were on the verge of rebellion. Their payment was reduced. That is, the war with Neptune is nothing more than a metaphor of some writer of that time, taken at face value by illiterate commoners. But there is, for sure, a bit of insanity in cutting salaries in the tense moment. Or possibly he really hated the Atlantic which was too jolting. Besides, Caligula tried to be above the gods, and the one whom the very first Caesar, Augustus, made his successor. Like the latter, he put up statues and temples wherever he could. He forbade portraying himself as old or with a bald head. He had a bare top of his head from a young age. But he was still a long way from that self-proclaimed god. He really did a lot for Roman Empire. And what about Caligula? certainly except that he spent a lot of money on floating palaces where he and the nobility and not only engaged in drunkenness, sexual deviations, self-mutilation of some guests and so on. He knew that deep down the plebeians hated him and once ordered a passerby to be executed just for a beautiful haircut, which he himself no longer shone. He slept little, different hallucinations, nightmares or conscience and therefore, already being mature, almost all the time he was in extreme resentment. Speaking of coasts, the 5-kilometer floating bridge over the Bay of Baye should also be mentioned. The fact is that before Caligula's accession to the throne, an astrologer named Thrasilus predicted that Caligula had a better chance of riding a horse across the Bay of Baye than of becoming an emperor. That is, this was done out of nothing more than harmfulness. Having seized power, the dominant character of this episode asserted himself in this way in front of everyone who did not believe in him. That was the third point of his character. The culmination of his colorful life also consisted of a lot of splashes. It is not surprising that this damned revile did not die a natural death, but died as a result of a conspiracy. When everyone around him is driven into a corner so that fear disappears, these people begin to act. On the shores of the English Channel in 40 CE, everything was ready for the crossing of the next Roman forces in order to continue the conquest of the Britons. The army was personally led by the princeps. But instead of the Ardain to start the campaign, Caligula, by then more like a ghost, commanded, collect shells. None of the generals doubted by that point that this was a madman. It's plainly that those who had already undisputedly believed in seizing his power did not know the general situation. What if the bulk of the legions will come out on his side? There was no need for an additional contingent of Rome to invade Foggy Albion. 
Learning of the Romans on the southern shore of the strait, the rebellious Britons curdled their rebellion and all their leaders bowed to the governor of the empire. So there was only one thing left to do. In Rome, it would have made an unnecessary noise to finish off the madman and his greedy behavior. He reduced the salaries of the legionnaires, despite the fact that at one time he spent money on the devil knows what. There were several senators in the military camp, one of whom, at his own menace, was the first man to plunge a blade into Caligula. And then the wrath began. They did not calm down until Caligula was nothing more than a pile of meat and skin on the shore. Although, according to another version, the Praetorians killed him even earlier, as soon as they found out about the senator horse. At the end, we must add that three of the twelve Caesars described by Gaius Suetonius were not the only ones who liked to commit the above perversion. It's just that it was Suetonius' treatise that received so much attention. It is worth knowing that Rome, first as a city and then as a country, and even one more civilization in our history books, was already originally created by those who had been expelled from various Italian communities, mostly Latin, and from Etruscan cities. First Romans are marginals who decided to invent their origin in a hurry, either from the legendary Aenian or from the gods. That is it for today. Thank you for watching, subscribe and get notified when new episodes come out and leave a like. And for now we tell you, see you later.